Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be rigging this strange contraption that you see on the screen before you. I've made the model for this available and you can download that via the link which I've placed within the show notes so be sure to do that before you start the tutorial. Let's continue. So to achieve the desired result here we're going to be using a combination of Espresso some Python and Dynamics. And as you can see, the end result really does look fantastic. It's, it really looks very pleasing on the eye. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. We'll start by actually rigging the Dynamics. Now, if we just take a look at this lift, we'll make this disappear and we can see that we've got our sphere actually within it. The sphere's got to be made dynamic, the lift itself must be. This push rod here that comes out of this solenoid has got to be dynamic and of course we've got our wire forms here. Now the wire forms if we take a quick look in here we've got this dynamic object if we just allow that to be seen. It's a tube object that we've created using a circle, a spline and a sweep and this is the only object that needs to be dynamic hence why I've called it dynamic because these don't actually do anything they're just purely ornamental but they look as if they're doing something and that's the illusion we're creating so let's start we'll we'll give this and we're going to be using bullet dynamics for this we'll give it a collider body we don't need to really alter much in here. Um, we can change the bounce if we wish to, but uh, we can leave it at something like 5%. We don't want much in there. And we can set our friction to 90. That will be fine for those. I'll command drag to copy this down because I need to place this on my lift. So that's our lift sorted out. In the solenoid here, I've got the rod and that's the final collider body and then the final dynamic object will be the sphere itself and we'll make that a rigid body and in here we don't need to apply to children so we can switch that off and its shape will make a convex hull. The bounce and the friction I'm going to take the friction down to 30 and leave the bounce at 5. So that's fine, that's all looking really good and that's will, will work fine for us. As I say in here, we don't need to worry about any of this um, apart from we need to change this rod here to a moving mesh. And we also need to do the same here, this will be a moving mesh. Of course, the tube object will simply be a static mesh so we don't need to change anything in here, that's all set up. As it needs to be. But yeah, that's our setup done for our dynamics and they're ready to go. Moving on from here then, we can start to think about Espresso because the first thing we need to do in order to make the lift move is check the actual position Y of our sphere. Once that's at the correct height, we know that the lift can start to move. That's going to be our first port of call. So we've got our Espresso null here. We'll add a programming tag, Espresso. We've got our window open and we're ready to start doing a bit of work. We'll bring in the sphere and at the output stage, give it a position Y port. We also need a time node, we'll bring one of those in and as I so often do, I'll remove the time port and give it a frame port at the output stage. Now we need to reach for our Python node and we need to start doing a bit of scripting so let's bring that in. 
For a start, we can rename this port and we'll call it sphere underscore pos underscore y. And then we'll remove the second port and add an integer port. And we'll rename this frame. And we can connect both of our nodes accordingly. Now at the output stage, we want to call this lift pos y. So we're going to be using this first Python node to move our lift up and down. And in order to do that, we're going to be using a range mapper. So let's go to a scripting layout. We'll just slightly rearrange our window here, just make that a little bit smaller. Open this once again, select here, open in Python editor, and we're ready to start working with Python. First thing we can do is remove this line because we don't need that one. And then we can add a couple more global variables, which will be trigger and start underscore time. Fantastic. Moving on from here, we have got, if we just bring this up here and move over, we know that we've got a frame variable coming in from our time node. So we can say if frame is equal to zero, so when we're at the start of our timeline, we want something to happen. And we need to initialize our globals. So if we can say trigger is equal to zero, and start underscore time is also equal to zero. That initializes those two. We can then think about looking at the position of our sphere. It's y, position y. That's what we're interested in here. And we know that we're bringing that in from our sphere here. So we can say if, and we can say sphere, if we spell it correctly, sphere, underscore pos, underscore y is equal to, and it will be, or rather less than or equal to, I beg your pardon, less than or equal to, and it will be 16. That's what we're going to go for here. We can then say if trigger is less than one, trigger equals one. So at that point, we trigger our trigger <laughs> when we've got our sphere position y less than or equal to 16. Moving on from here, then we can say, we just come back to this level here. If start time is less than one, start time is equal to and it will be frame our current frame from the timeline and we can use this to actually make our monoflop work so moving on from here then if trigger is equal to one we can say duration is equal to, and it will be frame minus start time to get our frame from the timeline, our current frame, and start from zero. And then if duration, and on this occasion, I want to do this over 360 frames. So I want my lift to move up, pause, and go back down over 360 frames. So quite a long time. So we can say is less than 360. And then we can create our range mapper. So we can say range underscore mapper is equal to brackets duration as our input value. 0, 360 as our input range. And our lift moves from its zero position here 
to a height of 200. So 0, 200 as our output range, comma true, comma. Now, at the moment, we don't have a spline. So we'll put a spline in, but we'll, we'll leave that till a little bit later. We can then say lift underscore pos underscore y is equal to range underscore mapper. And then to finish off, all we need to do is say else and it will be trigger is equal to zero and start underscore time is equal to zero and we're ready for the next cycle. And that is essentially our code. Now, one thing I have done wrong in, in this line for the range mapper, I should have said C4D dot utils dot range map. That needs to be in there. That's essential. So that was my mistake. My bad there. But we've got that sorted out. So we've got a range mapper in there and everything will work. Let's set up the user data. So the user data is actually going to go on this Python node here. And we can say, simply say add user data. The data that we want to add will be a spline. So we'll add that. And I'll add a group and I'll just call this control, I think. Well, it's not really control, but I'll just call it spline as well, actually, for what it is. Drop this into there. Pull this away from there so that we just get spline instead of user data. And then in my spline, obviously the data type, we need spline. And we can then say, OK. We've got this down here now and we can start to work with it. So we'll bring in four points. We'll worry about those two in a second. Our first point obviously needs to be at, if we twirl this open, zero, zero. And we can see that it's tangent x is, or let or rather tangent right x is 0.25. We want the same here with this one here, minus 0.25. And then we can worry about these two. The first one we're going to set to 0.24 in the X and one in the Y and our second point here 0.36 in the X and one in the Y so our lift will make an ascent over two seconds so quite fast pause for one second so I've actually worked all of this out basically 0.36 between, between 0.24 and, and 0.36, that equates to one second because I've divided 360 up into 12 segments. And that's what it gives you. And we can just work with these tangents here. I'm going to set that to minus 0.25 and I'll do the same one with this one here, minus 0.25. And that gives us a nice setup for our spline. We can then think about dragging this in if we just make some space here. I'll drag this in, it'll probably end up in the wrong place because it always does. Please fix this, Maxon. And we can just drop that in there. And we can say spline is equal to op and our user data. And then we can simply say down here after this true comma spline. Okay. And that completes the code for this particular part. If we then bring in our lift and at the input stage, we can give it a position Y port. We'll just plumb that in. Let's see what happens if we run the timeline. And up she goes, pauses, and down she comes. And you can see it's slower on the dis on the descent than it is on the ascent. And it will keep on 
going up and down because the sphere is still in the lift. OK, fantastic. So that first part actually works and that's brilliant. That's what we want. Now, moving on from here, when the actual lift reaches its highest point, if we just run the timeline again, once it's at 200 here and it's in its pause sort of phase, we need this rod to push the sphere out of the lift. So the sphere's got to be pushed out of the lift by the rod. And that's our next port of call. That's the next thing we need to worry about. And to do that, we're going to be using a copy of this and making some minor tweaks, and that will get that to work. So we'll get a hold of this and drag a copy. And at the output stage of our lift node here, we also need to add another position Y port because we're interested in using that to drive our second Python node. Now, for a start, we can, if we just make the window a little bigger, we can connect our frame port to the frame port of our second Python node. And then we can think about opening this up in the Python editor, because at the moment we need, or we've got our first Python node in there. OK, first thing we need to do is rename our ports. Now, we need our input port to actually be lift position Y, but we can't do that first because it won't let us have the same name at the input stage as the output stage. So we've got to rename our output port first. And this needs to be rod underscore pos underscore z. And now we can rename our input port and that will be lift underscore pos underscore y. And then we can connect the output of our lift to the input. Fantastic. So we've got it that far. We can now do some tweaks in here in order to get this to function correctly. We can see that our global variables are updated. We've got rod pos z in there for this output. That's worked out fine. And we've got lift pos y at the input stage. And we need this to be equal to 200 because we said that our lift's maximum height is 200. So when we're, we've reached that point, we want our trigger to be triggered. And of course, we, we need to update our start time. Our duration on this occasion needs to be just 50 frames. So we don't want 360 in there and we can change things in here. So 50 for our or zero to 50 for our input range. Our output range needs to be zero to 20 as opposed to zero to 200. And that completes the code. The last thing that we need to do is update our spline in here. So our second point needs to be 0.6 and our first 0.4. And that gives us a nice bell curve and we get a little bit of a pause in the middle. So that's good. Let's open up the solenoid, grab a hold of our rod bring this in and give it a position Z port at the input stage. Oops, that's better. OK, let's just connect this to there. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. That's fine. Let's just give this a run. It's saying it can't find a, a value, but it will do. If We just run the timeline. See what happens here. That's working fine. Go back to zero, clear this out, and let's run the sequence again. Pushes it, rib draws, and there we go. Yeah, looking really nice. And then the process starts again. Yeah, so that's doing its job. That's working perfectly. OK, fabulous. We can move on from here and think about the next step. I'll switch back to my model layout. And then we can think about creating a second Expresso expression to control these two 
arrows, which effectively are lights that tell us that the lift is moving up, moving down, and they work at the correct times. If we just open these up, so we've got down arrow and up arrow, we can see that inside them we've got down lit and up lit, which are two loft objects, very simple loft objects. So down lit here, at the moment we can see the display color is set to material and it's just a gray color, but our uh, uplit down here, we can see that that's on automatic and we've got this orange color in there. So if we just take a quick look at what I've done with the color here, we can see that I've just said it's 255, 133 and zero. That's how I produce that particular color. You can use whatever color you like, but uh, they, they both have it. Um, the, the downlit here, that does have it. If we go into automatic we can see that it's there. Okay, we'll just go back to material. So what we need to do then is take control of those aspects of our two lights. We'll bring in a second Espresso tag. We've got our window open. And then we're ready to start thinking about how to make this work. For a start, we need to be working with the position Z of our sphere on this occasion, whereas we were previously working with the Y, we now need the Z. So if we bring in our sphere and drop this in here, we'll bring in our position Z. And then we can think about moving on and doing a little bit more work. We need to bring in two compare nodes, so we'll get a hold of those. We've got our first, we'll command drag to copy our second. And we can connect our position Z output to the input ones of both of our compares. Now our top compare, we're going to make this greater than 90. So when our sphere is greater than 90, along our z-axis, we want something to happen. And our second compare will make less than one. So when our sphere is effectively at its zero position, that's when we want something to happen. In order to get the right things happening at the right time, we need a flip-flop. So we'll bring in one of those and we can plumb the output of our top compare into the on and the output of our bottom compare into the off. And then we're ready to work from here. All we need to do is bring in our two objects, our downlit and our uplit. So if we bring downlit in, drop this here, and we bring uplit in and drop it here, we can double check to see if we've got them in the right order. Now, if we connect the output of our flip-flop to the display color in here, we can see that downlit is currently correct. That hasn't changed. So that must be correct if we just select our display color for our input port for our uplit as well. And then in order to get them to work correctly, we just need a knot. So we'll bring a bool knot into the editor and we can connect the output from the flip-flop to the input and the output to the display color of the uplit. And we can see that that is still working correctly. Let's just give this a run and see what happens. Let's just make sure that we can get everything working. Now, at the moment, I haven't got my transport controls and I need those. So let's go into here. Let's go into our standard layout. If I can make that work, standard. There we go. We've got our standard layout. That's what we need. And now we can run the timeline and see what happens. Let's just do this. Sphere starts to move and it works. That's great. Back down to the bottom. 
Let's see what happens here. And away we go. And we can see that both of those are behaving exactly as they need to. So that's beautiful. What I'll also do is put the uh, ex expression here. I'm going to put that second in the queue just to be sure. I mean, it's, it is working correctly, but I, I prefer that that's the second in the queue. OK, the last thing then that we need to work with is the cable. We'll bring that back into the scene. And all it is is a spline with two points in here. We've got a simple spline. If we go into our structure manager, we can see that we've got point zero and point one. And that's all we've got there. And we're pretending that there's a motor inside this motor housing that's pulling the lift up. That's what we're going to do. Now, if we look at our lift, if we just open that up, we can see that we've got two objects. The cube, which is actually the lift car, and on top of the cube, we've got a tube down here. And we're going to give the position of that tube to point one of our cable spline. So in order to do that, we need another expression. We'll give ourselves an espresso tag and we're ready to start work. We can bring in our spline for a start and give it an object port at the output stage. And then we can also bring in the tube from our lift and give this a global position port at the output stage. The final node that we need is a point node. So we'll bring one of those in, add a position port. Now our point index will be one our object will be the spline and our point position will be the global position of the tube and that completes the expression it's a very simple one on this occasion let's see what happens when we run the timeline are we getting what we want let's just switch to our right hand view and we can see that we are there's our cable it's attached to the top of the lift and it's moving as it should yeah working perfectly and we can see that everything is doing the do it's all working correctly fabulous and there we go we've completed the rigging of our model and that's how you go about doing it it's quite straightforward really but uh, just a few expressions a little bit of python to make things work and the dynamics looks after the sphere and it all works really beautifully fantastic and that just about completes this tutorial because that's what i wanted to show you and everything is working as it should and as always i really hope this has inspired you and given you some ideas for things that you may be able to incorporate in your own projects and if you have enjoyed the video please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel leave a comment and of course ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media please please do share this video because we need the views and all of this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction but anyway that just about brings the curtain down on this one so i'll see you very soon on the next tutorial <laughs>